皆さん、こんにちは、シャロックです。And welcome to another episode of Sherlock Investigates Japan. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to wear the Orbi, which is used in many styles of EI Do, EI Jutsu, as well as often worn with the Kimono or Yukata, particularly for the male style. So, first of all, for many styles of EI Do, they do prefer that you wear a black. This simply just matches with the uniform colour, which most commonly is black. Uh, today I'm using this white one here simply because it's easier to see against my black baldy that I have on here. And let's make a start. So, first of all, my floor is clean, so I am safe to draw that. Just that. So, first of all, these belts, they are long, they are quite wide. This is done so that it creates multiple layers and so that it can help to support the weight of the sword or any other items that any person would have in their pockets. First of all, as you can see with mine, it's getting old. The end here is somewhat frayed. For my purposes, that doesn't really matter. Uh, in some dojos, particularly for gradings, that is not a good look. So, best thing to do is simply you can fold over the edge here. That will hide those frayed edges and once it's all tied around the middle, you won't be able to see this anyway. So that's a nice little way of saving those edges. For today though, I'm not too bothered about them. Now, first things first. What I want you to do is take the end 30 centimeters of the belt here and with my right hand, I'm pinching it and I have folded the belt in half. At the moment, the point where the fold is is pointing to my right. So pinching that area there, 30 centimeters down, it is folded in half. Now, keeping hold, particularly of this area here, this is quite important for now. What you're going to do is start wrapping the rest of the belt around your body. Now, because I'm right-handed, I generally do this going towards my right. So, right hand is going to hold the area that I've pinched directly to the center of my stomach here. My left hand is now pulling the belt around me. As it comes over the top, the part that I have folded in half, it points upwards towards my left shoulder at the moment. And I'm going to swap my hands over. My left hand is now taking hold of that pinch point where I've folded this all in half. My right hand is taking a hold of the other part, the wide part. The wide part is going to continue to wrap around. It's currently wrapped around my leg as well, so there we go. What you want to do as the orbi goes around is have it quite tight as well. If it's loose, it will not be able to support the weight of a sword, and the sword will end up wrapping around the place. So, nice and tight. The orbi is going to continue to come around again and what this is doing is creating multiple layers. I generally aim to have at least three layers of the orbi going around me. If you're lucky and you're a little bit smaller than I am, you may even have four layers as it goes around. Of course, if it feels loose, simply take a hold, pull, and this will tighten up. After you have three layers, the part you folded in half should be pointing almost upwards towards your left shoulder and the wide part of the orbi is now holding it in place. As you can see, I have some of the wide part of the orbi left over. Perfect way to measure the correct distance here is one arm's length. I'm pinching the end of the wide part, I'm extending my arm forwards and with the orbi flat to the floor, your arm's length. That is a perfect length. So, now's the fun part, tying the actual knot itself. Now one way of doing that with this uh, length here is you then fold it in half. Now again, this hides the frayed edges that I have there because mine's getting old and gives you the perfect length for tying a knot here. Now the wide part comes over the top now of the part that we folded in half, the thin part. Thin part goes from pointing towards my left shoulder down towards my left leg, 
why part comes over the top. Here's where it gets complicated. The wide part goes over the top of the thin part and then it folds back on itself. So it comes underneath the part that we folded in half and back up. It doesn't go underneath all of the layers of the belt, only the part that we folded in half here and comes back upwards. Now what does take a little bit of practice with this is being able to tie this knot and keep all of the layers of the belt nice and flat. Very often it wants to bunch up simply by pulling the knots tight, it bunches up. That's uncomfortable, doesn't look good, particularly under the hub cover. So, here you can always just use your hands, just flatten that out, make sure it's still nice and flat, nice and presentable. That's how I'm going to be holding itself in place. And we're nearly there. Final steps. The parts that we folded in half. Now, if you want to hide the frayed edges here again, simply fold it back on itself and that tucks it away there nicely. I'm not too fussed, this is just simply all the idea of most of my practice in. I've got a much more simple way to to break it. So, not too fussed about the frayed edges for myself. The thin pot. Fold back upwards, it is now pointing up towards my right shoulder, and the wide part comes down over the top, and once more, under the top layer of the orby, the wide part simply tucks inside there, and you pull it down and out from underneath. Again, generally here things start to bunch up, so just work that through. And pull it nice and flat, and there it is. There's your knot, nice and tight. Not finished. The last step. We don't leave the knot on the front here. We're going to move the entire belt around so this knot should end up in line with my spine. Now, easiest way to find the correct position here. My right hand takes a hold just on the left side of the knot, so my left hand side of the knot here. My left hand, I find the dip in the spine there, and using my thumb, take up the belt here. So now, as I spin the belt around, now to do this, make it easier, I breathe in a little bit as well. Belt slides around, and my left hand now comes over the top of my right hip. My right thumb, is now in line with the base of my spine. This means the orbi is now in the correct position. Hello. Just as a final part to make it look particularly pretty, if you're going out in kimono or yukata, you don't want the layers or the barabara messed up there. So, simply just pull these nice and flat, and they should all line up with each other. Now, Here's a sneaky trick for those of you who are practicing Iaido or Iaido Now, many sword styles, they carry the sword not directly next to the body, so it is not touching the dogi itself. The sword goes in between the first and second layer of the dogi. The sword simply slides in there. Now, particularly if you are new to Iaido or Iaido Finding those layers can be quite difficult. So, here's a sneaky little trick. That top layer, that first layer from my body, I keep it one centimetre higher than the other two. So it means simply, just by running my hand along there, I can feel where it is. There I have my, first, uh, my top two layers. There I have my top two layers. And there is the first layer here. So in between that is where the sword goes, nice and easy. See, as you go through the higher grades, this is generally frowned upon, but it is a good way of getting to know where that layer is and getting used to putting the sword. So there you have it. That is where, how you want it. So there you have it. That is how you wear your orbi for Iaido or Iai Jutsu and can also be used with the kimono and yuka, particularly for the men's style there. As always, thank you all very much for watching. 
I am Sherlock. みなさん、みんなくれてありがとうございました。あとでありましょう。